I would like to make a public service announcement. If you are standing in solidarity with women who are burning the hijab in Iran, does not make you a hypocrite against the hijab. Before we get started, please guys, please like this video and please subscribe. It helps me, it helps the algorithm, it helps me pursue this career. So if you continue to watch me, just please subscribe and please like, and I'll be uh, truly grateful. Like, why do men feel so obligated to just put their opinions out there about what they- of how a woman should wear the hijab? Don't mansplain something that you don't even do! Listen, I've been wearing the hijab for seven years, okay? And even making that decision was like, should I even making the, be making this decision? Is it a good idea? And actually, during the time I made the decision to wear the hijab, I was transferring from a college to university, and it was around the same time where there was a San Bernardino attack of, of three Muslims. I, I forgot if they were hijabi and I forgot like if they were specifically Muslim and things like that, but regardless of the point, they were involved with the religion of Islam and it gave a negative portrayal of our religion. And even my dad was afraid for me for me putting on the hijab because of the situations that have been going on. So for men to be explaining how a woman should be wearing a hijab does not make it any better for a woman to keep wearing the hijab. There's this video that I want to show you that my friend on Instagram posted and it's actually pretty interesting of how men always show up to tell women what to do to wear the hijab. Mets bien ton foulard, ma soeur. Hey, je te parle. Monsieur, on ne dit pas je te parle, on dit je vous parle. Un peu de respect, s'il vous plaît. Moi, te respecter Les femmes comme toi, je les baisse contre les murs et je les jette aux ordures. Monte. Maman, ça va Oui. Oui, ma chérie, ça va. L'école. Apparemment, Margie a remis la prof de religion à sa place. Encore Eh oui, elle tient ça de son oncle, cette petite. Mais qu'est-ce que tu racontes Tu veux qu'elle finisse comme son oncle L'exécuter Tu sais ce qu'ils font aux jeunes filles quand ils les arrêtent Tu sais ce qui est arrivé à Niloufa Tu sais ce qu'ils lui ont fait Tu sais que selon la loi, on n'a pas le droit de tuer une vierge. Alors on la marie avec un gardien de la révolution. Et il la dépêchait avant de l'exécuter. Tu comprends ce que ça... Could you believe it Like, this kind of stuff is not new. And unfortunately, it's not going to go away. This has been going on for a very long time. And the people who make decisions all the time about what women should do are the men. My other friend today brought up a good point is that it seems like it's just the Middle East who are making the women feel oppressed. But don't forget that America has made the decision. Men have made the de decision about the abortion rights of what women can and can't do. So, so the rights of women is being questioned and being challenged everywhere around the world and not just the Middle East, okay? This specifically about the Middle East is still very big. But going back to it of being called a hypocrite, I actually got a comment today on my post about what is happening about Iran about me being called a hypocrite, about me telling me to go read the Quran. Like, who are you, man? Like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Please tell me, where does it say women must be forced to wear the hijab? It is not okay. And it is wrong to force a woman to wear the hijab. Hijab is already hard enough and you are already making it difficult for them to even wear it, to even come at peace with it and embrace it. Some people have made decisions between their career and their religion about wearing the hijab. I'm going to show you another video about this girl who had to make a decision. She's, she was a professional basketball athlete and she had to make a choice between herself and Islam. had the highest record in Massachusetts in basketball scoring history in her school. 
among both boys and girls, by the way. For the first time in my life, I was really tested. I couldn't play professionally, so I had to make a decision. The thing is, if she made the decision to play basketball and take off her hijab, she talked about being conformant, right? The thing that she was fighting for her whole life just to be conformant because they want her to be the way they want her to be, if that makes sense. She has to change for them. And she fought for this. But unfortunately, just moving forward, it was too late for her. Because they already deemed her too old. But what she fought for is for Sikhs and Jews to also play professionally with a turban on their head. She fought for what she believed in, but it was still a difficult decision to make at the time. Even though she had to turn away from that career, she still fought and still educated and still pursued of what is right. Actually, recently, um, I was judging a karate competition and one of the judges actually walked up to me. He has no problem with me wearing the hijab, okay? He went and approached me and was like, and he said it in the most respectful way, and I, I'm going to give it to him. But he came and approached me, and he was like, I just want to ask you, are there multiple ways to wear the hijab? And I told him, there is written one way, but people believe and wear it in many different ways. Um, however they perceive the religion is however they portray it and uh, embrace it in the world. Simple. Uh, not going to any specifics into it. So, he proceeded to tell me that... And mind you, I've competed in karate before. He proceeded to tell me that the hijab that I am currently wearing is not allowed in competition. Because, because he said that my neck is supposed to be showing. I don't know where in the rule books it says that. And I personally believe that you know, the neck should be covered. Now, granted, sometimes, like, I wear a wrap and my neck kind of shows, but, like, I don't, I don't, me personally, I don't wear the, the turban. I wear the full shebang. And for him to tell me that my neck is not supposed to, my neck, and for him to tell me that my neck is supposed to show during competitions because they want to show the contact, which... Which in karate, like, there is no point if you make direct contact with someone's throat. And never have I heard of that. And ha I've always competed in this hijab, so I don't know where this new rule came from. But it's things like this where we have to fight every single day to dress a certain way and have it permissible to compete in these competitions. And the thing is, it doesn't even affect anybody. If anything, it'll affect me the most, right? If people are swimming triathlons and everyone's wearing their bikinis and one-piece bathing suits, and I'm wearing, like, a full-on burkini... I mean, yeah, it's definitely more clothes and probably is going to make me lose because the aero, the dynamics of the swimming and the whatever, whatever, you get the science behind it. <laughs> like, it doesn't affect anybody. So why, why do people make it such a big deal to, about someone wearing a hijab or a turban? It, sh it shouldn't be. But going back to it, men are the ones that make the decisions for a very long time. And I've talked about in my previous video about Saudi Arabia. Who are making these decisions for women to drive? For women to enter the country with a man? Men. Men. Women have been in the backseat for so long. And the, and the women in Iran are fighting. Fighting. Just to get through this. So again, for men to call us hypocrites. Because we are standing with the women who are burning the hijab leave because we are not standing up against islam we get what the hijab stands for we all know what hijab stands for 
They're supposed to make this decision out of their own free will. They're burning it because they killed that woman, Mahsa Amini, because of what happened to her. So, men, please. I know there's a lot of you that respect women, and there's also a lot of you that disrespect women, who speak before they think. So I suggest you be respectful to other women who are fighting to earn a place for freedom. Freedom. That's all we ask. Freedom of what we can do to our own selves and not have men tell us what to do. I don't really ask this much and I'm saying it at the end of the video as well. If you guys like this video, please subscribe. Please like this video. It's only going to take you a split second, but it helps me as a creator to keep doing what I'm doing. And if you guys want to see more of me, then press that subscribe button. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to continue the conversation down in the comment section, I'm always replying back. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.